Okay, so let's start the ESPIDF Eclipse and launch from the workspace we'd previously chosen. By the way, now you can connect your dev kit and turn it on. Give Eclipse a moment to start. And now let's maximize and close this welcome tab and go to File, New, Espressive IDF Project. And I'll call the project Udemy underscore ESP32 and click Finish. Now close out the README, and for the launch target, choose ESP32. And while we're here, let's set the COM port. And I have the Rover dev kit connected, so I have two COM ports here, and I'll just choose the higher number. If you don't have the Rover kit, just choose the single port shown, and then click Finish. Expand the project files, and go into the CMake lists here, and change the project name to Udemy underscore ESP32 underscore app. And this will be the name of the application binary produced by the build. Next, let's expand the main folder and go to this CMake list file. And let's get rid of all of this and add IDF component register. And then add sources, main.c. And let's also add include underscore dears with the period between quotations and close parentheses. Now let's go to main.c and let's clean this up. Let's just delete this and all of this here as well. And delete this as well. And we can leave it like this for now. Now go to Project and Build All. You can also use Control B as shown. And by building the project, we're going to generate what's called an SDK config file. The SDK config contains the project configuration that we'll need to adjust based on the project needs. Also, there is one error that may arise depending on your version of the ESP IDF that we'll need to resolve by adjusting the SDK config file. So just give the build a moment to finish, and I'll point out this error here regarding the invalid certificate. So here's the error, and we'll resolve it shortly. For now, let's just open up the SDK config. And the first thing we'll need to do is go to Serial Flasher Config and change the flash size to 4 megabytes. Next, go to Partition Table and change it to Factory App to OTA Definitions. And that's to enable OTA updates. And then let's go down to HTTP Server and change the Max HTTP Request Header Length to 1024 as well as the max URI length. Next, let's solve the certificate issue by going to embed TLS and choose use only the most common certificates. Now I'll do control S to save and go to build the project. Just give the project a minute to build. And we can ignore this warning here. And all looks good. Great. So now let's flash the dev kit by hitting the green arrow in the top left corner. And now the image is being written to the dev kit. And all looks good. So I've updated the project configuration lesson to include one more step. After progressing into the development of this application, I noticed that the ESP log information macro wasn't recognized by the IDE, and these red squiggly lines appeared. The application itself isn't affected, however, I wanted to get rid of them. So let's do that now. Let's go to Project, Properties, and under C++ C++ General, go to Indexer, 
And to change the default options, we'll check Enable Project Specific Settings, and then check Index All Header Variants, and also check Index Source and Header Files opened in the editor. And that's it. So let's apply and close. And if we build, they go away. Great, that looks much better. All right, so I'll see you in the upcoming lessons.